Now, time to update the top stories for you here on this Al Jazeera News Hour. The last U.S. combat brigade has pulled out of Iraq. The 4th Striker Brigade, 2nd Infantry Division, went over the border. From Iraq to Kuwait at dawn on Thursday. 50,000-plus troops are going to stay in the country until the end of next year. And what's described as a supportive role? The U.S. reaffirming its long-term commitment to Iraq despite the pullout. The United Nations says it's now received more than half of the 460 million it needs to pay for the immediate relief effort in Pakistan. The US has upped its donation pledge to 150 million. So let's talk now to Dr. Hani al Bana, the founder of the Islamic Relief, an umbrella organization that manages 15 charity organizations in the Muslim world. I want to get on to. Um, which groups have given the most and which, which are generally the most honourable in just a moment. But now seeing that it's approaching the target of 460 million uh, that the United Nations says was needed immediately, that, that must be good news. It's good news, but it's not enough. Because when you talk about 20 million people affected by the, the flood disaster over the last three weeks, and after three weeks, the international community managed only to raise 450 million, there's something serious need to be think about. Because I believe strongly that actually people are scared to give money to an area which could be seen as a focal point for what uh, the international community called international terrorism. That's why people are a little bit scared to donate, a little bit skeptical to donate. But actually here we need to shift away. You're not surprised at that, are you? I'm, I'm surprised because actually we are trying to politicize the humanitarian activity, the humanitarian needs of the people. Now I've got 20 million people are actually affected badly by the disaster of the flood for three weeks. But, it's, all, but it's about people's perception, isn't it? I'm just I'm flipping through my notes here and John yeah. Kerry's in Pakistan at the moment, yeah. an American senator saying, quote, we don't want additional jihadist extremists etc. coming out yeah. of a crisis. There, there is a, a sense that people could perhaps exploit yeah. uh, the turmoil. Definitely, this could happen when you prevent the credible organization from working in the area. When you prevent the, the, the normal process of money transfer from the West and from the East to come to the area itself. A lot of Muslim organizations and others have been blocked from coming actually to work in Pakistan from coming even to work in any part of the world because actually this is the international monetary regulation which has been done by OFAC and by the Treasury Department, whether it's actually in USA. This is, this is about the flow of money internationally. That's concerns right, about actually. the fact that it might not be going to the right place. It that's, could be that's going different. to the that's, that's, what, that's what leave those yeah. individuals in this area to take the credit because of the absence of the credible organization have been prevented from coming to the area. We need to look at it logically and objectively, not actually subjectively. Pakistan is in a great deal. Even Afghanistan is a great deal of humanitarian work, but actually need to credit some of the organization from the Middle East, from North Africa, from the Muslim countries, even individual donors to, to transfer money has become extremely difficult. The Muslim world has been praised for its, its rapid response yes. to this, whereas if you want to put it into two halves, um, the Western world has been criticized for being a little bit slow. I'm wondering whether that is because it happened at this time, which is a time of giving, a time Ramadan. of thought for other people. It's the holy month of Ramadan. This is good, but not good enough, because in time of Ramadan, we could have raised from the Muslim world more than a billion. If those people are allowed to raise funds, there's some governments in the Muslim world are preventing people from putting donation in the donation box inside the mosque and preventing people from giving donation as cash to the organization. They want everything to be worth. And this is scaring millions and millions and millions of Muslim donors. Why are people not allowed to donate within their mosque? This is a law. This becomes like a law. You cannot, you cannot collect money from the, from the mosque as cash. Even if you can imagine that you go to Sunday prayer in the church and someone tells you, no, 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 you can't put any money in the box. It becomes a law in certain countries, which is very, very serious. This frustrates people like yourself and myself as donors. What, what to do? Cash in hand. Cash in hand could be a very serious problem for those people which the West and the international community try to, to prevent from taking the credit. And, Doctor, individual donations um, do make up a, a large part of, course, of yeah. the, the pot that comes together uh, with any such um, tragedy such as this. And I know that the United States um, individually gives more than any other country on earth uh, to charitable works. Uh, when it comes to national giving, yeah. how do you hold countries to account when they, they hold up their hands and say, yes, yes, I'll, I'll give five million, I'll give 20 million. Is it just so much air? It's sometimes could be hot air because I remember there's a, a conference about supporting Niger, the family in Niger five years ago, and they pledged about 300 million, 350 million dollars. Niger still have not received 
even 50% of this five years after, after, after this conference. So is it knee-jerk? They don't want to appear to lose face, so people say yes, 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 yeah. when they've got no intention. That's a problem. So the problem could come, like, actually, in, in a pledge. I would not believe in a pledge unless it's been a check written or a transfer being transferred by the bank. Otherwise, government or individuals or corporation could actually raise their hands for a million or two or five hundred. And you find this with your organization? Of too. course, actually, in, in the charity dinners, actually, at least 10 to 20 percent of the budget does not reach the organization. So we can expect to raise 100,000 pounds, but we raise at the end of the day 70,000 or 80,000 pounds, mostly from the cash which you receive in, in, in the dinner, plus the checks which has been signed. So don't be deceived by pledges by anybody unless you receive the cash in the organization. Don't believe it till you see it. That's it. Thank you very much indeed, Thank Doctor, you. and uh, best of luck with all of your work, particularly you in this part of the world, uh, Pakistan at the moment. We're talking now about what's happening in China, deadly violence in the troubled region of Xinjiang. Let's go to Laura Carl, who's going to tell us more. Uh, Laura's in our Asia Broadcast Centre. Hello to you.